Okay, last autumn, the University of Manchester Library began a research project to help understand the types of research activity at each career stage to inform future library provision. And today I'm going to describe why we did this and the innovative approach we took to discover what researchers really want. But first, a bit of background. In 2009, the library embarked on its new direction strategy and we delivered 66 priority actions. By 2012, we were ready to get started on a new strategy and we had themes aligned to the university's three core goals of outstanding learning and student experience, social responsibility and world-class research. Being an expert research partner, what would demonstrate our commitment to this? Library leadership team sought suggestions from staff and we also asked visitors to the library what was on their wish list. But as users of the physical library are mainly students, we hadn't given a voice to our researchers. We realised that the only way to be sure the library's strategic focus for researchers was the right one was to speak to them directly. And vital to this approach was to include researchers at every stage in their career and also across all four of the university's faculties, as needs would vary according to subject area. Do researchers have preconceived ideas of what libraries do? We thought they might, so we made a big decision not to ask researchers about their use of the library at all. Instead, our focus was to find out more about the day-to-day -day experience of conducting research with the intention that this would give a steer on where we could help. Here's the project team. And for the record, yes, Nick had a very busy start to the year working on the researcher study as well as Eureka. With the exception of me, the rest of the team work in our academic engagement team, a relatively new team whose remit is to forge relationships with academics to facilitate two-way communication. Now, although the main aim of the study was to engage with researchers, we thought a good starting place would be to speak to research support teams across the university. We needed to find out what other support was given to researchers, as the library and faculty teams sit separately in the university structure. We'd anticipated that the experience of researchers would vary depending on <coughs> faculty. There would be no one-size-fits-all approach. We expected support to be tailored to the specific needs of researchers in each subject area, and the conversations with faculty research support staff confirmed this. Now, although our concern was the researcher experience at Manchester, and we developed our methodology to fit our requirements, we wanted to know what other research had revealed about researcher behaviour. So we included a literature review as part of the project to provide some context. We were also interested to know if and how other libraries were engaging with researchers with a view to comparing methodologies. And it was a really pleasant surprise to find a number of other libraries engaging in similar activity. And our responses um, in the end extended beyond the UK to Sweden and even as far as Australia. Now, we had a strong feeling from the start that a risk to the study would be for library staff to conduct the research. Previous experience had left us thinking that researchers would steer any conversation with the library to be all about their own use of the library. So we decided to work with Michael Jubb from the Research Information Network. We provided Michael with all the information that we'd um, gathered so far, so the lit review, the benchmarking, and summaries of the interviews with faculty research support staff, and we asked Michael to run a workshop with library strategy project managers and library leadership team to get them on board too. We decided to run focus groups with PhDs and postdocs and that individual interviews with, were more appropriate for fully fledged researchers. We had support recruiting to the focus groups from faculty support staff and we also in incentivised participation with Amazon vouchers. Now, Michael's commitment was to conduct 12 individual interviews. We asked our academic engagement librarians to make a personal approach to their contacts, ensuring we included a range of researchers from new academics to senior professors across all subject areas. The logistics of conducting the interviews was another issue to consider. We offered researchers the option of meeting for coffee in the university's bistro or in a location of their choice, but as expected, most chose to meet in their office, which involved arming Michael with a campus map and pointing him in the direction of the 147 campus bus. Now, Michael devised a set of questions for the individual meetings, 
and this elicited some brilliant results. But 12 was such a small sample size. And if we were expecting library colleagues to use the results of the research to shape their strategy projects, we needed to increase the sample size to make the study credible. So Michael briefed the academic engagement team and they carried out more focus groups and individual interviews, again ensuring there was a spread across discipline and career stage of researcher. It's worth saying that there have been significant benefits in using this approach in terms of relationship building. Now we'd agreed with Michael that he would incorporate the findings into a final report which summarised all the focus groups and interviews. His brief was to produce a report with key findings as well as a set of recommendations. And so that library strategy project managers had the opportunity to digest the information contained in the report, Michael ran a further workshop with colleagues to deliver the key findings and encourage managers to think how the results would influence each project. And I should say that bringing everyone together in this way had the added advantage of encouraging managers to consider their project in the context of the whole strategy. And I'm really happy to say that the key findings are now being used to shape library strategy and the recommendations are being used to inform an action plan for research services activity within the library as well as being shared with other supporters of research across the university. We're confident that our innovative approach means we now know what researchers really, really want. Thank you. <laughs>